What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in for another BGN Radio special. I am your host, Rachel Prevet, and this episode is brought to you by SB Nation and Bleeding Green Nation. It is Super Bowl week, and I told you guys that the lineup was going to be stacked. It's loaded. And as you can see, I am joined by a very, very special guest, Eagles legend, two-time pro bowler, and Hall of Fame running back for the Philadelphia Eagles, Brian Westbrook. What's up, Brian? Happy, Bo Happy Super Bowl week. How are you feeling? I'm, I'm super excited to be here, Rachel, but I'm also super excited, of course, about the big game this Sunday. It's like, you know, I, it's, it's hard for me to, to hold my excitement from the NFC Championship game to this point, but I've been holding on to it and trying not to shake my children all day, all day long and, 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 and take them advantage there. So I'm super excited about it. I was about to say, like, it's so early in the week and I'm anxious. I'm excited. Like, can it just come already? But you have <laughs> You have like a, a, a campaign going on right now with Bud Light. It's called the Bring Home the Bud Light. And so can you just tell me a little bit more about that partnership? Yeah, I'm excited to join Bud Light and really bring Bud Light to Philadelphia. I mean, really, it's all about us winning the game, but also that parade. I don't know if you were, were around back in 2018 when we had the parade. It was absolutely awesome. And Bud Light wants to help Philadelphia make this victory a lot easier to enjoy by drinking Bud Light. And so, uh, you know, they allowed me to pack the trucks. They allowed me to drive the forklift. They, uh, Bud Light allowed me just to be a part of the entire moment. And so now all we have to do is go out there and win the football game. Then I'll be able to some, bring some Bud Light to the, Philly, to, to the Philadelphia area and enjoy the parade. I was not at the parade the first time, but when the Eagles win this year, oh, best believe I'm driving up. That's right. There you go. There you go. But for all of the gentle listeners out there, between now and the Super Bowl, you have uh, you were able to tweet easy to enjoy or hashtag sweepstakes for a chance to win some Bud Light for their party. This is, of course, for uh, listeners who were 21 years and older. That's right. Yes, but my very first question, I got to jump into it. I'm born and raised in Annapolis, Maryland. I know that you're from Maryland, went to DeMatha. And so I saw a fun fact that you actually have a horse farm in Maryland, which to me is just crazy. So can you just talk to me about this business venture and how did you even come about, you know, deciding to do this? Yeah, so I bought my horse farm. It's in actually in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Um, I bought it back in 2005. And for the first 12 years, we ran it as a boarding facility. Um, I knew nothing about horses. I mean, and I mean, absolutely nothing. I didn't know about the care. I didn't know how to ride. I knew nothing about uh, fixing fences, cutting grass. And so really the first six months or so after I purchased it, I spent day and night, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. just being at the farm, being around um, the, the gentleman that I purchased it from, teaching me what the heck you do, teaching me about horses, teaching me about tractors, teaching me about lawnmowers, teaching me about fixing fences, cleaning stalls, all the different things that go into um, owning a horse farm. And so we enjoyed it for, for 12 years as a boarding facility. And then right around 2017, my wife and I, we just started thinking like, hey, we, we have a bigger calling on our life. We have a bigger uh, way to impact our young people. And so we, we, we closed the boarding side and kicked all the horses out. And we began running the Brian Westbrook Foundation out of the farm. And really the Brian Westbrook Foundation sole purpose and mission is to educate, empower, and show our young people access points to the pathway to success. How do we get our young people to understand these are options for you to be successful and you can take it in all these different ways. It's really our belief that our kids are walking around with blinders on. They only can see what's right in front of them. And it's our goal to teach them a variety of different things. So we're slowly taking these blinders off and helping to educate them so that they're empowered to be successful in whatever they wanna do in life. And so we're, we're giving them financial literacy. We're giving them the understanding of data analytics, sports analytics. We're giving them the understanding that even if you don't go to college, there's plenty of jobs and vocational skills that you can learn to be successful in life. And so there's a lot of understanding and learning that we're doing with our foundation, something that we're super proud of and happy about. I love that so much. I'm definitely going to have to make a visit because I think it's very, very cool to see. So shout out to you and your wife forever. Well, we still have horses there. So come on down. We'll, we'll throw you up on one of these horses. We'll, we'll, we'll have it. <laughs> Got to make that happen for sure. Um, but I wanted to talk about, of course, the Eagles in this Super Bowl run. 
And so this week, Nick Sirianni spoke with the media on Tuesday, and he was pretty much just telling the media what his message has been to his players leading up to this week. It's a lot going on. And he was pretty much just telling them, like, you guys got to stay locked in and maintain the routine that you've had all along you have experienced, you know, going to the Super Bowl. And so there's so much chaos leading up to it. I'm sure a lot of distractions. How do you maintain that tunnel vision when there's a bunch of going on? Well, that, that's the hardest thing as a player. Um, you know, when you're at home, you have a routine. Monday, I do this. I get a massage. I get stressed. Tuesday, I hang out and just rest and watch TV all day. I hang out with my friends and do these different things. And, you know, of course, throughout the week. Now you're in Arizona. Some of these things aren't easy to do. You're not having friends over. You're staying in a hotel. So talking about keeping the same routine, it's almost impossible. You just have to make sure that um, you're still, number one focus is the game. You don't allow your focus to venture to tickets and your friends and all these different things. You have to remain focused on the game. The other thing that has to be done, and it's hard to do, is that you can't play the game mentally before actually Sunday, right? The actual Sunday comes. And so what happens as a player, you become nervous, you become starting thinking of the game, you start thinking of what you're going to do in this situation and that situation, and you physically start playing the game in your mind. And that becomes actually exhausting. And so you have to make sure that you don't allow that to happen to you. You got to be excited about the opportunity, but you want to make sure that you're prepared. And I, I believe when you look on both teams, both coaching staffs would do a great job of making sure that guys are prepared and that they don't play the game before the actual game. Talking about preparation, Nick Sirianni deserves a ton of credit for his success these last two seasons, especially, you know, last season was his first time as head coach. And so what are just your overall thoughts on what he's done for this Philadelphia Eagles team? Nick has done a great job. Coming in, it's hard to coach when you're a first time coach, you got veteran locker room, you got guys that may not believe in your system, may not even know who you are, where you're coming from. But Nick has done a great job of getting buy-in from the players. And, and usually buy-in comes with winning. He did a great job of getting buy-in early from his players. He got the ability to win nine games last year, to win 14 games this year, which is a huge jump um, in any league, no matter what you look at. And so now we talk about a team that believes in his passion, believes in his message, and they're just following. When you see Coach uh, Sirianni and the things that in the way that the guys treat him with the reverence they talk about him uh, with the way that the attitude of the team is they've adapted his personality they've adapted his way of thinking and doing things and that just has voted very well for everything Philadelphia Eagles winning uh, the, the the culture the culture of the locker room and that that building over there everything has worked out exactly the way it's supposed to be in Philadelphia. Running backs, Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, Kenny Gamo have been phenomenal in the postseason so far. And so what do you expect to see them from, you know, the Super Bowl game? Do you think that they're going to ball out again? Or are we going to see the ball spread around a little bit more to the wide receivers? Well, I would love to think that if you want to keep Patrick Mahomes off the field, that you run the ball a little bit more. But I also know Steve Spagnola, the, the defensive coordinator for the, the Chiefs, he's going to blitz. He's going to bring run blitzes to try to put you into a situation where you have to throw the football. Um, so, you know, listen, I, I think that Miles Sanders and all the other running backs gain well, as well as Boston Scott, can have an impact. It's all going to come down to how successful and how often they can stay on track. Are you being successful on first down? If you're successful on first down getting four or five yards, that makes second and third down much easier, and uh, which really allows you to, to run the ball a little bit more. And so I think if we can be successful and stay on target and you know, on pace in the first down, then that allows us to run the ball much more efficiently and have more confidence to be able to do that on second and third down. And before I get you out of here, I had checked out another interview that you did and you listed the following players on your Eagles Mount Rushmore. You had Randall Cunningham, Brian Dawkins, Reggie White, Harold Carmichael, Concrete Charlie, and also Donovan McNabb. So I wanted to ask you when the Eagles win, are any of the current players on this roster going to get moved up into your list? Uh, that's a good question. There's, there's so many good players here. You think of Brandon Graham, you think of Lane Johnson, you think of Jason Kelsey, uh, you think of the guys, Darius Slate, guys that have just done it for a long time there in Philadelphia. You know, listen, if Jason Kelsey wins his second Super Bowl and, of course, Lane, they, they, they're certainly being that consideration. But 
those guys that are listed, those are those are the guys, you know, Dawkins and you talk about McNabb, you talk about, you know, some of the guys, Reggie, you know, it's just it's just hard to beat, you know, and, and replace some of those guys. So and that's something I have to think about, okay. something I have to take under consideration. But you you can't you can't mess around with the, the type of resume that Kelsey and Lane Johnson have two Super Bowls in the last five, six years. That's that's the super impressive. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate talking to you. I got to make a trip to this horse farm, but yes. thank you. I hope you that you enjoy the rest of your week. Thank you so much. Take care.